I actually don't think it's that stupid a question. What is it? Like, can you squat hundreds of pounds in boots? Ah, we're doing that thing where I'm going to pretend I don't know what the title of this video is. This is Nick at Stridewise.com. I am Jake Bowley from ThatFitFriend.com. Jake Bowley is a competitive powerlifter and strength coach and a longtime friend of mine, and we are going to be squatting in boots today. Now, boots are known for, among other things, having a higher heel than you would find in sneakers, and it's actually not that unusual to see people deliberately squatting in shoes with heels, right? What's, what is the history of heeled lifting shoes? Because it's actually very, very long, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. And so like with weightlifting shoes, so that's going to be the type of shoe that has that strategic elevated heel for lifting. Folks will use those for squats. They'll use them for the sport of weightlifting. So the snatch and clean and jerk. And the reason why folks use an elevated heel is because they can assist with dorsiflexion, which we can talk about after we squat. I'll talk about the biomechanics and how an elevated heel basically changes the whole lower body movement pattern that we go through. If you look at like the history of weightlifting shoes, when weightlifting started, we actually didn't have quote unquote weightlifting shoes. Nike didn't have their Romalio's model out, you know, Reebok didn't have the legacy. Instead, what they used at the time when they first started exploring using an elevated heel for the sport was like almost like a suedo boot looking shoe. Because if we look back decades, they didn't have just shoes with elevated heels. Right. Boots were what you would use if you wanted an elevated heel. So in some ways, <laughs> boots were used in weightlifting, not technically like the captain boots I have on, but there was a modified version of that boot that delivered an elevated heel for the first weightlifting athletes who started to explore that style of footwear to help them excel in their sport. Now, if the average person watching this video just like gets out of their chair and tries to get like into a nice deep squat in the ground, chances are, unless you're someone who has like a pretty solid lifting habit, the further down you get, the more your heel is going to lift off of the floor because that ankle flexibility isn't very well honed in the average person. So having shoes that come in with a heel, that means your heels don't have to go so far into the ground to have like a good squat and to have like a good distribution of weight. So that's why people wind up having heels in their lifting shoes. And we're going to try it out with boots. Jake has his very, very old Thursday captain boots here as well. They are old. He did not get them for this video. They are just the only boots that he owns. I also got a pair of Thursday's Chelsea boots sent out to him. Those ones are for free from Thursday. Thank you very much, Thursday boots. And we are going to see how it affects your lifting. Now, original weightlifting shoes, did they have like leather midsoles and that kind of stuff? The same thing that boots have? I believe so. Like obviously I've never actually physically held like an OG pair of weightlifting shoes slash boots that the first athletes used. But from like the images we have of those lifters, uh -huh. they look like your very standard like leather boot with a leather midsole, etc. Jake has a website called That Fit Friend, which has, it reviews countless lifting shoes and other types of shoes as well uh, for working out in. So this is literally the best guy in the world that we could be asking for uh, comparing actual lifting shoes to uh, a Goodyear welted boot. Yeah, so generally what you're gonna get with the standard weightlifting shoe is the heel's gonna be a TPU, which is gonna be a very like firm, lightweight plastic that's very durable. And then throughout the midfoot into the forefoot, you're gonna get like a thicker rubber. Now there are some models out there that will use EVAs throughout the shoe. And like, you'll see that in like the Adidas Power Lift, like they use a very high density EVA foam in the heel. Uh -huh. But for most shoes, especially like I would say like quote unquote, the more serious weightlifting shoes, you'll generally see TPU. And compared with normal weightlifting shoes, they typically have like TPU foam. Thursday boots and the just your regular Goodyear welted boots, never what the brand is. Typically, it's like a rubber outsole, leather midsole, some cork filling, and a leather insole. But Thursday has a layer of EVA foam as well. So uh, let's see how it holds up to a couple hundred pounds. Yeah.
Welcome to the Post Boot Breakdown. This is Nick, and with me is the athlete of the day, Jake Bolly. Jake has squatted 400 pounds in boots, and what we're going to do today is walk through how it felt and how it compares to... This is what many consider the platonic ideal of a lifting shoe, the Nike Romaleo. Nice hard heel, nice hard heel on these boots as well. So how could it possibly be any different? Jake? How could it possibly be any different other than the whole entire construction of the shoe? Yeah. Look at the heel! <laughs> <laughs> the, you're right, the heel. We're only focusing on the heel. They are not that different in the context of how this heel is going to translate to lifting performance. So. In the Thursday boot, we have a slightly higher heel, which you will feel a bit when you're squatting because we briefly touched on this in the intro, but an elevated heel is gonna change how much you can forward translate those knees over the toes. So it's basically putting you to, into an environment that when you are squatting, you can more so stay upright with your torso and allow those knees to track forward, which a lot of folks find they're capped to due to ankle mobility, hip mobility, etc. But when squatting in these, honestly, they didn't feel that different. Other than like obviously like the midfoot structure and the toe box width and whatnot, they didn't feel incredibly different just based off of if I'm talking only focusing on the heel elevation. What about the heel? This seems to be like a straight line down on a classic lifting shoe. Is this, does it feel, because this seems like flat and then dips a bit. A little is bit. It, is that, was that very noticeable, the weight increase? A little bit, yeah. Like around like 365, I started to notice the midfoot here start to like, not compressed, so to speak, to where they like bent in, but just you feel it a little bit more because this, like you said, has like a more angular slant versus having a bit of room here under the midfoot. You do start to feel that compress a little bit, especially if you do try to like really ground those feet and like almost like create like a softer arch, I want to say, when you're squatting um, because your arch will always compress a little bit as weight gets heavier. So that is something I did notice, but like truthfully, like was it enough to impact my performance? Not really. Wow. Well, let's, before we talk about what it was like to hit the final weight in these boots, let's talk about the very brief appearance of yeah. the Chelsea boot. Now, one good reason that we had the Chelsea boot here as a differentiator, one, a big difference is obviously the goring is a bit less grippy and a bit less uh, supportive around the ankle. But another thing is this is Thursday's a dressy Chelsea, so it has a leather outsole. It does have studs. But nonetheless, uh, Jake found pretty quickly he had to get the Chelsea's off and uh, never wear them again. Yeah, so <laughs> toe box in this shoe is super narrow too. Compared, like the Thursday Captain isn't incredibly wide, but you do feel a difference, especially when you're like loading. So if you're watching this and you were thinking about getting the classier pair of Chelsea boots for squatting, I would recommend not doing so <laughs> because the leather outsole just it didn't grip the rubber floor well. And so like with 315 on my back, I'm like, I could squeak this out, but if I put like 365 and 405 and I slip out, like, I'm, I'm going to be pretty bummed. Yeah. One important lesson from our experiment, don't squat heavy weights in leather sole dress shoes. In case you were wondering. In case that was something you're considering doing. The other thing I'm curious about, uh, less secure on the ankle, did that come into play at all? Or did you kick them off before that would have become an issue? Not, not really. Like... <sighs> It's such a marginal difference that I think like for most folks too, if they were even like planning on doing something similar and testing this, which they should, I, I don't think it would be that noticeable for most folks. What about, like, the, what about the flexion? Like when you were, when you were squatting, like this didn't feel any better, different as you, you so were if you board? if you watched, I didn't actually lace these all the way up. Uh, I kept them down here and didn't actually go through the top two eyelets here because I wanted to be able to flex. So this actually in the context of ankle motion, range of motion, it actually could helped. be better, yeah. But right. like if I were to tighten this all the way up, you'd be a little bit capped just due to the leather kind of restricting you. Got it. Um, so if you watch, you'll notice that I didn't do these top two and that's because I wanted to make sure I was able to get as much ankle flexion as possible to really drive those knees over my toes. All right, end game, final thing to talk about. Once you got all the way to 400 pounds, how did the experience of squatting in the shoes change as weight at, or was uh, added to it? Did you uh, sense any more differences as more weight was added and as your form and mechanics and everything became ever more crucial to uh, follow? To be honest, like, that not, not a huge difference. What I did notice though is like, I'm like, okay, f I have on a pair of boots. So that means I have to really be focused on what I'm doing because truthfully, like I've never loaded 405 pounds on my back in a pair of boots before. So if anything, it made me a lot more like zeroed in and conscious of moving and not like having any faults in my patterning because I'm like, I don't know how this is gonna go. Yeah. Like I, it, I don't, it shouldn't be a problem. It doesn't feel like a problem. It feels plenty stable, but at the same time, it's like when weight's getting that heavy, it's like, okay, like, 
I ruptured my quad around 365 when I'm playing it this way and I gotta really dial in the form and be super stable and work on like having a good tempo down and not dive bombing, etc. Just because I don't know how this outsole is gonna interact with bigger weight. I don't know how the midfoot and heel will be structured when I'm loading, but overall, honestly, like I didn't really notice a huge difference other than me just trying to be hyper aware and not, you know, kill myself under a barbell for a boot video. So one could argue that squatting in boots is actually better because you have to dial your form in and be so conscious of your form because they're so much worse. I'm not going on the record saying anything of the sort. <laughs> I don't think you should back squat and load your squats in boots, but if you are going to, you should be fine doing so. But I would just say don't do that. I think it would be safe to say that like static lower body work would probably be the one area where a boot may excel in the gym. And that note excel is like relative to everything else, it's gonna be really bad at. All right. So yeah, that's well, what I would say. There you go from the horse's mouth. I interpret that as saying, don't, these don't. are the best boots for squatting in. Yes. Given that you wouldn't want to wear boots for anything else. Yeah. And you should avoid them with more gusto uh, if you're doing other athletic activities. Whereas uh, if you're squatting, maybe the boot could manage. Yeah, I think that was a pretty good assessment. <laughs> I was I was waiting for something sarcastic and I like something like the thumbnail, like trainer says boots are best for lifting, <laughs> comma, emotional. Yeah, you can. <laughs> One would say that they are the best boots for lifting and you shouldn't do anything else in them and you also probably shouldn't lift in them either. Yeah. That's our video for should you squat in boots. Thank you to Jake Bolling. That fit friend is his YouTube channel. It's very, very good. Uh, we used to work together for many years in fitness uh, prior to our paths diverging, um, but I'm delighted to have this opportunity to work with him again. Give him a follow if you like lifting and don't like boots quite so much because you're not going to see as much boots on this channel. Uh, and also subscribe to my channel as well if you just went up here. And that's, that's the video. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me, dude.